in the, in the Near East or the, uh, or in the, excuse me, in the Far East are the biggest importers. Then you see it slips down in the Middle, in the middle East uh, and elsewhere in the world. But again, you see who the importers are. Uh, this is global consumption of, for feed and food, seed and industrial products. As you can see, the growth has not been in feed sector. It's been in the uh, food, seed and industrial, primarily in the United States for ethanol production. But this is a bit deceiving because what that doesn't show is all the distillers dried grain that comes out of the ethanol and goes into the uh, feed animals, and which is in the United States and which we're exporting in the rest of the world. If you add that on top of it, we've still had a growth in consumption of corn for feed. But still, um, it's just direct corn consumption is actually going down. Uh, global consumption of wheat for animal feed. This is one of the things that's out there that uh, maybe keeps corn exports down. If you've got all that extra feed uh, wheat out there in the world and it's priced itself in the market, you're in fact going to export, uh, see uh, that be used first. But if you look in 2007-08, we had, Europe, we had uh, South America paying, a f excuse me, Europe paying a phenomenal premium to get corn out of Brazil that was not biotech. Um, that, that was in fact approved for use in Europe because they couldn't come get corn from the U.S. because they, we had unapproved events that we were growing. So corn, they wound up paying a huge premium that year. And Europe, one day, on, one day Europe has only finally decided that it's, quote, I hate to use the term for it, uh, man enough to face up to the fact that biotechnology doesn't hurt you. Uh, because otherwise they're killing their, their own animal sector with a lack of availability to feed ingredients, they're making their farmers less competitive in the global market. One day, they'll get there, but the politicians thus far have not been shown that courage. Um, the, uh, this is corn consumption for ethanol production. In the U.S., you can see how much we've expanded that in a relatively short period of time. And that is going to continue to increase somewhat. It depends on how much blend, uh, the, our government decides can be blended with gasoline. But it will be continuing. Uh, corn, again, uh, on a global basis, you can see the growth down there for food, seed, and industrial products. That's been the major driver of demand for corn uh, worldwide. And again, all of that, practically all of that is policy driven, government subsidy policy driven. Here's global corn ending stocks. Because of all that corn going into ethanol production, we're bringing down stocks, down, down, down. and. Uh, you know, 15%, uh, n not that comfortable level. If you get a bad drought in, in July in the U.S., you got a problem. Uh, so that's a tight situation. Corn has the potential, bend on weather, to get uh, a very volatile crop in terms of price. Uh, but not this year, but maybe a year from now. We don't know. Um, Southeast Asia, production and consumption of corn. You can see that uh, you're a net... Uh, corn importing region. Uh, production is trending up. Uh, we are here in the Philippines, I know, are using biotech corn and there is an expansion in that area. Uh, Thailand's a large producer of corn. But again, uh, not uh, keeping up with demand. And here's the uh, corn imports, as you can see, relatively stable during that period, around four and a half million tons, and that's somewhere in that region. Uh, so I think that. Um, Depends on, in the future, if you ex expand your yields on corn, expand the planted area, then in fact imports won't go up much. But in fact, I think there's a real potential of doing that. Um, here's an interesting one. This is the last slide that I'm going to put up. It talks about where we're going to be in the future. This is, the, I just took the demand for soybeans globally since 2000. You can go back and run this back to 1980. The graph doesn't change. Uh, it tells you that if we can continue to grow consumption globally over the next 10 years, the same pace we've grown it in the last, since 2000, we're going to need 70 million tons of additional soybeans in 10 years to meet global demand. 70 million tons is more than Brazil, Argent, excuse me, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, Bolivia combined. Uh, so where do you get that production? Certainly some of it's going to come from yield. We're getting a new biotech event that started to be released in the U.S. this year. They say it's going to increase yields. We haven't seen the results on it. Uh, we're going to see new bio, other biotech events coming that are raising yields. Uh, we think that uh, clearly that's going to be part of it. If China, if uh, 
uh, India were to adopt biotechnology, we could see yield expansion there. But most likely, we're going to have to expand the area substantially. And where is it going to come from? Not anything out, especially out of the U.S. We're about run out of land, unless we take a, about, uh, land out of the Conservation Reserve, which is like, unlikely. Uh, you've got some potential in the Ukraine, Romania, Bulgaria region, the Black Sea to expand that with the right policies. They can and will grow soybeans with the right policies. Uh, you've got uh, little areas elsewhere in the world that can grow a little bit, but not much. Russia certainly can do more uh, in the right situation, but they have a limited area that can grow it. Then it's uh, Brazil. And if you, you mentioned, brought up earlier about, in fact, don't like cutting down trees, uh, well, uh, they're going to get some trees cut down if you're going to grow 70 million tons between now and then. Or we're going to have some, have some major yield breakthroughs. Uh, but again, that just is a quick overview of what's going on in the global market to set the stage. Of course, now we're going to have Tom come up and Tom will ta actually tell you what's really happening. Uh, but uh, with that, I think our time's about up. So if there's any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Questions for... Um John, or would you like Tom to come up and ask him both questions?